Welcome back to Sunday Morning Quickies, episode 113 for the 17th of March, 2024. I've had a couple of requests lately to demonstrate how to put the needle clamp back together on a 201-2. Well, that obviously has absolutely nothing to do with this 15-30 that's on my fixture right now. So let me get this machine out of here, uh, get the fixture out of here, and get a 201-2 on the bench. And we'll do that right now. This machine came into the shop a couple of weeks ago uh, for some repairs and some troubleshooting. And um, it has since been, those problems have since been uh, identified and some of the parts that I needed for it actually arrived today. Those are parts for the upper thread tension mechanism. So we're going to use this one as uh, a demonstrator for doing the um, needle bar clamp. And uh, hopefully this next weekend this machine can go back home. Anyway, before we start, let's look at the anatomy of the needle bar clamp. We have the clamp body and its screw, and on the body you'll see this open end here, this outside end, is threaded. That is threaded for this little screw. This screw on the flip side, you'll see, has this little nubby protruding. Okay? That little nubby is going to engage in this indentation on the needle bar. That nubby is going to position, hold the, the, the needle bar clamp in position when the needle bar screw, uh, locking screw, is loose. So that's what's going to be indexing and holding it up. The last component, and the one that gives most people the most trouble, is this thread guide. Let me hold it up so you get a background. And you can see that thread guide is kind of an oddball shape. And it has on the, uh, that big round thing on the end. Well, that round end where it protrudes is actually going to go inside of the hole in the needle clamp where the actual uh, needle clamp screw is. So we're going to start by getting that in position. And I generally use a cotton swab, I'll use the pointy end of this one, to kind of force and hold that in the spot, get it in place, and then I'm going to hold that, actually I'm going to use a, a little bit pointier one here, I'm going to use it to hold that as I'm getting it in position underneath the needle bar, and then I'm going to slowly let that out as I'm bringing the clamp up. Now, I've got the machine tilted back so you can see this easier. You see here in the middle of, the, of this hole, where the threaded hole is, we have that indentation. Now I'm just going to lightly snug up the screw in the back, just to hold it slightly in position, and it's, it's not locked in yet, it's just, just lightly snugging, and I'm going to use one of my screw starters and I'm going to get the screw going in and as I'm holding this here I'm loosening up that screw because I want to make sure you see I'm jiggling it that the nubby on the back of this screw is actually engaging into that indentation on the needle bar and when I am confident it is there then I just snug that up and bada bing bada boom we've got it on now being a 201-2 um, the uh, flat on the needle will get installed to the outside or in this case it's to the left and go ahead and stick that needle in and that my friends is all there is to that next thing we're going to look at I'm going to take apart this upper thread tension mechanism and I'm going to show you how to reassemble one of those I've already put the new parts in but I'm going to take it apart I'll, and I'll explain to you a couple of the adjustments we have to make on that. Okay, we're going to start with the stud of the uh, upper thread tension mechanism. Now you'll note the stud has all of these slots in the barrel. Uh, those slots engage in with uh, this piece of wire on the check spring that runs inside the coil. So, um, that's very important to remember and also the um, 
the uh, the split on this on the stud. We want this slot here. We want that to be in a horizontal plane. So I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to push the stud all the way in. And actually, I'm just going to put the thumb nut on temporarily, just so I can use that. And I'm going to keep that. So it's just a little past flush. I'm going to make sure that's level. And I'm going to hold it in place. And the set screw is back here. So I'm going to hold that in. I'm going to run that set screw and get it nice and snug. There we go. All right, I'm going to go ahead and take the thumb nut off. The next piece that's going to go on is this guide. This guide is actually dual purposed. Um, this ramp area here helps guide the thread as you're threading the machine so that the thread goes in between the tension discs. And this little piece on the side here, that's the, the rest for the check spring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get my screw started in a, secured in a screw starter. And this rides in a little, around a little raised area here on the casting. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start this in position so that the rest is at about nine o'clock-ish, something like that. This is an adjustment we are going to make later. And um, what, I might as well explain that adjustment now. How you want this adjustment to be set is so that when the eye of the needle is entering the work, that's when the check spring is going to come to rest against that stop. Okay, next on our hit parade is going to be putting together the sandwich that goes on. And that consist, the sandwich consists of the two tension discs and they go convex side to convex side and this backing plate. Now, remember I mentioned the piece of wire inside the check spring that's going to be going onto one of those, into one of those slots. Going ahead and I'm putting the spring around and I like to have, as I'm putting my sandwich on, and by the way, when you're putting this on, make sure the loop on this end of the spring goes all the way around and doesn't go through into that slot. Uh, but I like to have the tail sitting down at around the six o'clock position or so. And you might have to move it slightly, whatever, one way or the other, until you can get the um, tail that's going inside the spring to go um, into one of the slots. Then I simply, while holding that, bring the check spring up so it's sitting against the rest. Like I said, we're going to be adjusting this rest yet when it comes time to do the final adjustments on the machine. Next piece that goes on, we're going to put in the pin, the release pin. Some people put that in earlier. And then I'm going to take the release plate and push it down. Now the release plate also is the, uh, is the indicator plate. It's got the plus and the minus. And you know it's doing its job with if the um, presser foot is down and then you release it, you can feel that it's coming up, and then you release, and then it's good and tight again. So then we take the beehive spring. You'll notice the beehive spring on the small end has a half loop. The half loop goes towards the bottom. And then the release washer has the little nubby on it. That little nubby is to the top, and it kind of curves towards you. And then we just take the uh, number dial stick it on there, press it in, and then turn on the knurled thumb screw or thumb nut. Now, I like to have it set so that the end of the nut and the end of the stud are flush when I'm at four. So I've got that flush there, but that's not where I want it. So I'm going to move it to four. I'm going to push that in and kind of turn that just a little bit and maybe a little bit more go and knock it a notch at a time. There we go. And that's pretty much flush now. And that gives me a good zero to zero movement. And um, I find that's a good starting point uh, when you have good new parts like I do on this one. So um, yeah, I might have to alter that a little bit, but I always set it so that when I've got um, a good balanced stitch, 
I try to make, I, I then adjust by pressing in and just moving the numbers. I don't move the, I don't move the, the, um, the knurled uh, thumb nut. I just move the numbers so I get it to like four or whatever the customer wants actually. Generally it's four when the stitch is good and balanced. That's all there is to it. They're pretty simple to put together. Um, it might look intimidating. The first one or two you do might be, oh, less than a lot of fun. But once you get the hang of it, it's real, real easy. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and we will see you on the next video.